Some people say that we are quite extreme in our views on the pure breeding of boa constrictors. We gladly agree here, since it was us who introduced the philosophy to keep and breed only pristine wildlife forms of boa constrictor in order to preserve these beings as they occur in the wild. This was already in the mid 90s. It was mainly thanks to our effort that this breeding philosophy is firmly established now. Therefore, one could say that we are the pioneers of pure breeding. Thus it is that many boa keepers turn to us when they have qualms on the pure breeding of their boas or rather when they want to know about the subspecies the animal belongs to. Therefore we want to provide some information on this matter in this video. In order to liven up this somewhat dry topic, we present some variants of pure breed boa constrictor constrictor and boa constrictor imperator. Furthermore, this is surely more instructive than watching our faces on the screen. Good to go? Ok, let's start. The determination of the subspecies and or variant of a boa constrictor from a photo is guesswork with little value since also crossbreed boas sometimes look quite identical to a pure breed specimen. The only safe method to ID a boa is to trace back the bloodline of the animal step by step, that is generation for generation to the specimens that were caught in the wild, that is, in the natural distribution area, and exported to your country. To achieve this, you need to ask the breeder or the previous owner of your boa about the origin of the parents of the animal. Often it is necessary to contact the pre-previous owner or breeder, the pre-pre-previous owner and so on. Please note that this is valid in both for the mother and the father of your boa. Meaning, you need to retrace the pedigree of your boa step by step, including grandparents, great grandparents, and so on. If you can't trace back both lines to the distribution area where the imported animals previously lived in the wild, because one of the former owners of the parents can't be found or is not willing to give you information, you can never be sure what kind of boa you actually have. In most cases, it will turn out that your boa is a crossbreed or that the land of origin can't be determined anymore. A number of hobby breeders would be in for a nasty surprise when they use this method to check out the boas that were sold to them as pure breed specimen. In many cases, these very hobby breeders sell crossbreeds 
as purebred boas in good faith, because to this day they don't know that they have been ripped off, or maybe they even don't want to know. This begs the question how wholesalers and major retailers who buy hundreds of slow seller boas from hobby breeders each year handle this matter. Do they check out every litter meticulously with the method mentioned before, or do they accept the statement that this boa is a Suriname red tail boa, a Hawk Island boa, a Taramara boa, and so on, without further investigation? This is a question each customer needs to find an answer for themselves. Also, the appearance of a boa is not a suitable tool to determine the pure breeding, it is still a criterion for the exclusion of the belonging to a certain subspecies or variety. A good example for this is the Tarahumara boa. This dwarfish form of boa constrictor imperator is distributed in Mexico and has the typical jet black head markings of boa constrictor longicauda. Apart from the size, the head marking is the most distinct and obvious characteristic of this variant. All of the Tarahumara boas, again, all of the Tarahumara boas show this head marking. In contrast to the Longicauda boas, they have it already by birth. Please note, no black head marking, no Tarahumara boa. There is no exception to this rule. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. I am glad that you did keep up until last and I hope you have gained some valuable information. In case you are waiting now for the slogan, check my boas, I am afraid you will wait in vain. Good luck and have fun with this great hobby.